Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, the North's Air Force during the American Civil War. Just before we get started with today's video, I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring it. To support Today I Found Out and learn more about Brilliant, please go to brilliant.org slash today I found out and sign up for free. If you thought that air warfare was reserved for a time after airplanes were invented, you thought wrong. During the American Civil War, the Union troops had something of an air force, using hot air balloons to spy on Confederate troops. The idea to use balloons was the brainchild of Salmon P. Chase, the Secretary of the Treasury, and Joseph Henry, the Secretary of the Smithsonian Institute. They suggested that the military should create the Balloon Corps under the command of Thaddeus Lowe to do some aerial reconnaissance for the Union. On June 17, 1861, Lowe demonstrated his balloon in front of President Abraham Lincoln. He went up to the lofty height of 500 feet and flew the balloon the short distance between the Washington Mall to where the National Air and Space Museum sits today. Lincoln had doubtless seen hot air balloons do such things at fairs for years, but what made this journey special was that the balloon was hooked up to a cable that linked an airbound low to the War Department. In the first air-to-ground communication in America, Lowe sent the following telegram to Lincoln from his balloon. The city, with its girdle of encampments, presents a superb scene. Soon after, Lincoln wrote to General Winfield Scott about Lowe's abilities. However, when Lowe presented himself to the general, he found that Scott was less than impressed. Lincoln ultimately had to personally intervene to get the general to accept Lowe into the ranks. In August of 1861, the first army balloon was constructed and named the Union. The balloon depended on tapping into Washington, D.C.'s natural gas lines, so it wasn't able to go very far. However, the next month, Lowe was able to take his balloon up to 1,000 feet and spy on the Confederate troops residing at Falls Church, Virginia. With his direction, Union troops were able to accurately aim at enemy troops without actually seeing them. This was a military first, and the success resulted in the establishment of the Balloon Corps. The first order of business was to hire more aeronauts. Around October 1861, a number of balloons were tethered along the Potomac River. From their vantage point, the people manning the balloons were able to see any Confederate activity up to a day's march away, giving the Union time to prepare a plan of defense. After a short period of time, balloon technology had advanced. Lowe himself invented a way to make gas portable, a wooden tank lined with copper set up on a wagon that also carried water, iron, and sulfuric acid. Combined, these wagons produced hydrogen gas, which lifted the balloons up. The army had 12 wagons built to aid the balloons in long-distance missions. Each of them weighed about 1,000 pounds. Throughout 1862, Lowe continued to go on reconnaissance missions, noting on maps where Confederate troops were located. When he traveled at night, he would count campfires. It wasn't all good news, though. The Confederate troops quickly caught on to what was happening and started shooting at the balloons with guns and cannons. Luckily for the people in the balloons, it was pretty difficult for soldiers on the ground to actually hit them. When shooting failed, the Confederates learned how to cloak their positions using camouflage and blackouts, making Lowe's job much more difficult. If Confederates made fewer fires, then Lowe's estimates of their forces would be low and the Union troops would underestimate the South's strength. They would also paint fake cannons black and set them up around the camp so that if a balloon happened to fly over while it was still light, the North would think that they had too many resources to chance a fight. These fake cannons were called Quaker guns because they were, like the pacifist Quakers, completely harmless in war. The South did set out to copy the balloon's success at one point, but they lacked the technology and resources required to make their balloons practical. The first Confederate balloon was difficult to control as it was made out of varnished cotton and kept aloft with hot air. The balloonist did, however, manage to draw a map of Union positions around Yorktown despite the difficulties. A second attempt was less successful. A balloon made of silk was tied to a tugboat and dragged along the James River before the tugboat crashed and Union troops took control of the balloon. The Union Balloon Corps met its demise before the end of the Civil War. With the switch of command in 1863, funding was cut to the program, which meant that the balloonists could no longer continue staying aloft. On top of that, Lowe himself was accused of financial impropriety and forced to resign. Lowe had become the driving force behind the entire campaign, and without him to advocate for the Corps, it disbanded. So just before we get into the bonus facts today, I want to tell you a bit about Brilliant. You've heard me talk about Brilliant before. They are a fantastic compliment to passively watching educational videos like this one. Now, we in the video today talked a lot about the history of the hot air balloon, but have you ever wondered how they actually work? It's actually one of Newton's famous laws, and if you're interested in learning about that sort of thing, then Brilliant is definitely for you. Brilliant allows you to learn about things like buoyancy by actively solving problems. It's a method of learning called active learning, and it's incredibly 
effective. In the video today, we looked at a great example of hot air balloons in the real world, and real world examples are exactly what Brilliant uses to teach you science and math concepts. When you want to learn about how things work in the real world like a hot air balloon, you need to use practical examples because just memorizing formulas isn't really going to help much. Brilliant can provide you the toolkit to think through problems and solve them. And it's remarkable how what you learn becomes pretty much immediately applicable, and solving problems like this is actually pretty addictive. So to support today, I found out and learn more about Brilliant. Please go to brilliant.org slash today I found out and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people to go through that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. And let's get into those bonus facts. In addition to the technology of balloons, the Civil War saw a significant use of telegraph machines on both sides. The Union sometimes handled upwards of 4,500 telegrams a day reporting on Confederate movements. Both sides encrypted their messages with ciphers and both sides learned how to tap telegraph machines. Sometimes messages would become unreadable due to mistakes made on behalf of the people sending them. Robert E. Lee hated telegrams and even ordered his officers not to send anything, lest the Union find out what the messages contained. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, let me thank again Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Check them out through the link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.